Hello, this is anisometropia and anisoconia testing and treatment. We have here an example of a child who has anisometropia. You can see that if you look at actually the magnification of the spectacles on each side, you can see the right eye has very little magnification difference. But the left eye, after having retinal detachment surgery as well as some treatment for some other things, now has a significant amount of myopia in her left eye, resulting in the magnification difference between her right eye and her left eye. Her left eye is minimized relative to her right eye. Anisoconia can be tested in a number of different ways. One of the things to think about with anisoconia is what kind of anisoconia or anisometropia is it? Is it axial in nature or is it refractive in nature? That will change our, our treatment strategies at the end of it. So some of the common test findings you can look at is keratometry or, or corneal topography values. If there's a difference between the keratometry values, sometimes referred to as delta K, then this would suggest that refract, it's a refractive anisometropia, not an axial length anisometropia. You can also look using partial coherence interferometry at the axial length of the eye to see if there's any difference between the two eyes. And that would be if one eye was longer than the other, we would consider it an axial length anisometropia. Typically though, in reality, most types of anisometropia are kind of a mix of both, where there's a little contribution from both features. There's a number of different ways we can test anisoconia. I will be honest with you, we don't really do these very often in the clinic. I'm just letting you know that these exist and they're out there, so if you need to use them at some point, you can. Uh, there's optical space icometers. There's stereoscopic viewers, which are sometimes you'll see around still as keystone viewers. There's a procedure using Maddox rods. There's also computer simulators there out there and an anisoconia test book. Here's an icometer from the old days. It's so old they don't even make these anymore. You can't replace them. That's partly why we're not all that worried about going over this and there wasn't going to be very many questions on this section. What happens is patients view a series of lines that will be unequally displaced or tilted. As they look at these lenses, they can actually determine based upon the tilt, you can detect the amount of overall size image differences between the two eyes by aligning them properly. And similarly, a keystone stereoscope, which you can see here, does similar features where you can actually sit there and measure the amount of magnification difference between the two, two eyes. So in this case, we have two images equally placed over here, and we move those spots till they're lined up. Because the magnification differences you can then read off the number to see how big the magnification difference is between the two eyes. There's also a Maddox rod procedure, which we will not go over in this course. You can also use trial lenses to actually create a different types, a trial, trial lens system to actually test whether your, your magnification is the major cause. That can be done using two sets of lenses, one on the front and one on the back. If you put a plus one lens on the front and a minus one on the back, you create a magnification of 0.8%. Why is this positive, positive, possible? Because both lenses have the same amount of power, so you're keeping the same amount of power and essentially being zero net power between the different mags. But the lens up front will have more magnification than the one on the back. And as you increase the powers of these lenses, you can go to two to minus two will increase to 1.5%. And up to 4 and minus 4 will increase to 3% mag. So how do you use this? Over the person's spectacle lenses, you can place this series of lenses and see if it, if it takes care of their problems. So by doing this, you can minify or magnify the image, correct that image, and thereby test to see if magnification is the, the cause of their symptoms. There are also computer programs out there right now that do very similar things to what we just showed you where they're looking at the magnification while looking through red-green glasses. One eye sees the green image, one eye sees the red image, and you can alter the size of both those images till they're equal size. And then that, that program will give you a readout of the magnification. And finally, there's a test book out there very similar to your color vision tests and your stereo books doing very similar things where you have different size circles and red-green glasses, and the person can tell which circles are essentially lined up or equal, and that will give you the magnification between the two eyes. Here's another example of that book. Again, though, this is not commonly done in clinic. 
what we could do is typically look at the clinical findings such as keratometry, axial lengths, and then make our judgment of which treatment to go with first rather than look at testing to figure out the amount of magnification. So treatments. Rarely do we need to treat if an image is different than less than 2%. So if there's a 2% size difference or less, which is around the amount of 1 to 2 diopters of anisometropia, we typically do not need to treat differently for that amount of anisometropia. Over 2 diopters is where we start to have problems. Some ways we can do that is glasses only. We can use contact lenses. We can use combinations of contacts and glasses. Uh, we can also have modified glasses where we've actually modified the curves that you each lens to minify the magnification. Here's a way to think about that using the retinal image size for each type of correction method. Again, we think about things as axial versus refractive. We know that minus lenses will make the lenses look smaller, plus lenses will make them look larger. So if we're treating hyperopia, we'll have worry about larger images on the higher plus eye. On the myops, we'll worry about smaller images on the more myopic eye. If the amount of anisometropia is primarily axial in nature, that means that the eye is longer in one eye than the other, we actually, spectacles is the best way to correct for that, that image type. And this is being shown here with the letter E. Uh, equal means that the image size between the two is relatively equal. Uh, greater than sign means the, the letters are larger using that modality. And the, the less than sign means the images are smaller. Conversely though, if we have refractive issues, that means we think that the cornea is more curved in one eye than the other. We think the lens is more curved in one eye rather than the other. We then start to think about things that actually minimize the vertex distance. And so that's when we look to contact lenses and intraocular implants. Using those modalities, because they have minimal vertex difference, distance, they have minimal magnification. So using those modalities when you have a refractive anisometropy is more successful than when you have an axial myopia because the eyes are longer or shorter than they need to be. first step is always to try the spectacles. In the absence of knowing for certain that the anisometropia is refractive or axial in nature, always try the spectacles first. If the patient still has symptoms and can't tolerate the glasses, the next step is to try contact lenses. Contact lenses, the principle is to reduce the vertex distance again to reduce magnification changes. It is the most common treatment after, after the spectacles for treatment of, contact, uh, of anisometropia. It uh, results in good VA, good cosmetically. There's no other issues. It's low cost, and it's only limited by the pe patient's ability to wear the lenses, which is a problem because many of our people with anisometropy and anisoconia are older patients who cannot wear contact lenses. This is just to remind us that the vertex distance changes the magnification. A vertex distance of zero, being the contact lenses on the eye, has a magnification of effectively zero. Whereas if we look at spectacles, which might have a 15 millimeter vertex dif difference, we could have four to 6% increase in image size. The next step is size correcting spectacle lenses. We can, spectacle, we can order standard lenses where we actually can either choose to le leave one eye a little bit blurry, that usually the non-dominant eye, or we can actually order specially sized lenses to change the magnification by changing the base curve. So if you want to keep the vision as good as you can, you can alter the base curve in spectacles, making, minimizing the, the magnification difference between the two eyes. And that could be increasing the base curve, increasing the center thickness, or changing the vertex distance between the two eyes. Changing the vertex distance is awfully challenging to, to do, so we typically use the base curve change as our first option. Thank you. The end.